Olawale Bakare, popularly known as Mandate, who is the Oshun State Coordinator of Revolution Now Movement, arrested last Wednesday, August 5, has been released. Mr. Alfred Adegoke, his lawyer, who shared the news of his release with our correspondents, also said that three other detained for participating in the protest had also been released. Bakare and six other protesters were arrested in in Oshogwon Wednesday by the operatives of the Department of State Services during a protest organized by the movement. Three out of the protesters were however released last Thursday to their parents while Bakare and others were held over their inability to bring a parent or guardian who could stand for them. Adegoke gave the names of those released on Thursday as Samuel Olu Lafe, Gift Erupe and Martins Jesuloni. Joining us live is lawyer Tokpe Akinyode, and also joining us uh, would be Aisha Yesufu, co-convener Bring Back Our Girls Movement, and we also have Innocent Chukuma, the director, Ford Foundation West Africa. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a good pleasure being here. Um, I, I'm going to start with uh, Tokpe Akinyode. Some would describe this as a stealth movement in, in what we barely saw coming. Um, what was the objective of the recent protest? Well, um, the revolutionary movement and um, under the canopy, the canopy that led the revolutionary protest nationwide on August 5, uh, has continuously made the demands to the government over its inability to aid the welfare of Nigerians. And we don't have to overflow the issues. We are Nigerians, we know that. All is not well with this country at the moment. Uh, the protest that occurred last week was well announced. And apparently, if it wasn't, we would have had such a successful gathering of people nationwide in Abuja, Lagos, or Shun, elsewhere, gathered to make the demands. The Nigerian government, led by the President Mamadou Buhari, has failed woefully in terms of securing the lives and property of Nigerians. Nigerians are dying in large numbers by the day, especially in another part of the country. A serious government wouldn't take these things for granted. Unemployment is on the rise in the country, much as people are practically without any means to survive. As you know, there's high level of poverty. And these are not ratings that we declare to ourselves. These are ratings that are already noted globally. So Nigerians are suffering largely. Nigerians are passing through a lot. And it is natural, it is a natural sequence that when these things happen, Nigerians will rise to make the demand of a government that has been failing them. So that was why the revolutionary movement converged last week. All to right. make the demand for the government, especially to resign, having failed woefully to secure the lives and properties of Nigerians. Okay, I mean, some of the objectives, are, like you've just mentioned, good governance, proper infrastructure development, end to extrajudicial killings, the sack of the service chiefs, um, of course, over the poor security situation, low employment opportunities also. Um, among other agitations, it, do you think that having so many demands at a time, you know, may, can that lead to confusion? You see, the people have the right to make as many demands from the government as possible. These guys are living large on Nigeria's resources. They cater for their travelings, cater for their belongings, cater for their welfare, cater on large number of Nigerian's posts to make them live life. So <laughs> there can't be too much demands from the people. At any rate, the demands from the people are merely elementary. They are reactionary demands because you are talking about welfare. We are not even talking about major demand that should lead to a 21st century development in the country. We are just talking about usual demands, light, water, roads. I mean, there's not a big, nothing big at all to ask. As a matter of fact, the Buhari government wrote on the popularity that he will make these demands, he will provide solution to these demands, he will end insecurity, he will provide power, he will provide light to the people, he will ensure that people go to school, he will ensure that lives aren't wasted on the street because of poverty and all of those things. So, I mean, there are not even demands that are, that are exceptional or different or anything 
big, no big deal at all in these demands. At any rate, they are the demands that, as a matter of responsibility, any reasonable government anywhere in the world should adhere to. How, how successful would you say the protest was absolutely, and absolutely. why? Um, and also, absolutely. you know, would you have um, wanted, you know, something more out of that protest? If, you, if, you, if we're talking about the you know, success rate of the protest now, is there, are there certain things that you would have loved to see more of or less of? The, pro the protest was done actually, or uh, the revolutionary movement entirely, converged majorly to galvanize or mobilize Nigerians into action. And the process has started. Already, we began the conversation. And it is not stopping. The truth of the matter is that Nigerians are living a miserable life under the Buhari administration. We must talk. And so what we did to defile police arrest, police brutality, you know, intimidation by state security, and which I saw myself, because I was also on ground, armed forces, you know, military attacked, brutalized Nigerians, beat them up, you know, with the boot of the gun and physically to lay them prostrate on the floor and meted that all forms of injustice against them. Despite that, Nigerians stood their ground to make the demands. And so it was a successful, absolutely successful thing. But revolution cannot just be a one day event. You know, the process to get the liberty of Nigeria cannot just be a day event. And so the process to demand for the outing or ousting of a failed government is continuous. And that's why the conversation, okay. having kick-started last year, has been a successful outing ever since. All right, well, we're going to come back to you. So just stay with us. Uh, we're also joined by Aisha Yusuf of uh, the Bring Back Our Girls Group and, of course, Innocent Chukuma, West African representative of uh, Ford Foundation. I'm going to start with um, Aisha. Were you in support of the recent you know, Revolution Now protest? And, of course, can you also let us know why? For me, I, first of all, I think that that, that question is a bit uh, off because somehow we have gotten to a place where we feel uh, we have to support a protest for people to have the right to protest. The issue is that the people have the right to protest and whatever it is they want to protest about, it's absolutely their right. Having said that, of course, absolutely, I support the protest. What, are, what is the protest all about? It's about it's demanding for good governance. It's saying that life should be secured. Every one of us in, in Nigeria, we are suffering, and yet we don't want to do uh, something about it. People want to stay at home and, and do nothing and expect that everything will, will work out uh, well. That's not the, the issue should even arise whether we are supporting or we are not supporting the project. The issue should be people have the fundamental right, the constitutional right to go out and protest, and they should protest. And the government has no right to act unconstitutionally by arresting them, by coming after them. In reading, you know, some of the things that when you were talking, reading the news earlier on, you talked about the fact that, oh, some of them were held uh, because they didn't have, there were no parents or guardians to come and stand for them. Why are you asking parents or guardians to come and stand for adults? I have, my last child is 18 years old. So you mean if you arrest my child at a protest, which you are not supposed to do in the first place, you'll be waiting for a guidance. That's an adult. We must begin to not allow our nation to begin to uh, uh, make us live a life as if we are not human beings, we are slaves, we are not citizens, we are, we are not slaves in Nigeria. And I've said it before, and I'm going to repeat it again. Revolution is imminent in Nigeria. It is either we have a bloody revolution or a bloodless revolution. And the revolution we have where people are being attacked, people are, uh, we have armed people that are coming against the, 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 the country, killing Nigerians. And the, the Nigerian government is ready to negotiate with them. But here we have a bloodless revolution where people are simply demanding under the constitution to say, do the right thing. Or if you don't do the right thing, leave. And, and when did it where, become a problem that you ask the government to leave if they don't do the right thing? That's where I'm about getting into. Um, for, there's a, lot, a couple of people would say that a continuous protest without a clear direction wouldn't get you anywhere simply or mostly because the leaders don't appear to be listening. How, how, how do you ensure that they listen? Well, first of, first of all, I would like to take that statement where they talk about uh, protests uh, without, uh, uh, what, what was it, the way you put it, without a clear direction. 
what 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 makes them think there's no clear direction? For example, let's take the revolution. What is, what is not clear about the direction? What are the demands that they are making that uh, that is not uh, that we don't understand? It's not what we are going through. What is what is in their process that they have not made it clear? I think what people people do is that a lot of people they don't come out for protest. They are looking for every excuse to be able to justify and feel good about themselves that this is the reason why they haven't come out for protest. So they think they are putting out this narrative that protests don't work. Protests work in Nigeria. And I'm going, I'm going to give you a few uh, examples. For, even apart from the ones the military did and all of that. Protests against her. Uh, we've had the social media big protests that took place in December 2015. And it was stepped down when they wanted to guard the social media. Bring back our best movement has been there. We marched for Lassa women, Unimed lecturers. We got to vote. We marched. Uh, we're not too young to run. They did other things. They also did protests. Of time, Nigeria is there. Nigeria immigration, 2000. It's a protest that people that people do of, of those that had been uh, 2,000 uh, immigration officers that had been sacked, and then at least one, over 1,000, 1, 1,500 of them were brought back. So protest works in Nigeria. They listen. The only thing why we've not had the kind of uh, a situation where our leaders would really listen is because we've never had the critical mass. And what is this critical mass for a protest? To really be effective, it's about one to two percent of the population. Yeah. And in Nigeria, we'll be talking about two million Nigerians. Do you think that if two million Nigerians hit the street today, the government will not listen? Definitely, right. they will we're, listen. We're going to go get to that point. Um, hopefully, the only reason why the government doesn't listen is because Nigerians don't come out to march. All right. And that's hopefully, the before we end, we're, we're going to speak about you know the idea of Nigerians actually coming out to march. Hopefully, before we end, um, I want to speak with Innocent Chukuma now. Um, what would you say um, would be an established process for effective protest in your experience? Well, the the Constitution of Nigeria makes the right to peaceful assembly uh, clear. It's under the uh, Bill of Rights uh, section. But what you have over the decades is a situation where the police and other security agencies have uh, relied on a colonial rule, the Public Order Act, which by the way, the Court of Appeal in 2007, I believe, struck out and declared it unconstitutional. But the police continue to rely on this bill that requires members of the public who want to protest to go and seek for approval from commissioners of uh, uh, police. And if they fail to, to do that, they use what we call uh, in the literature, is collected force in stopping them. This particular act is unconstitutional. What I would expect the police to do and other security agencies is that once citizens come out to peacefully protest, use what we call negotiated management. So if you think they are blocking highways where other uh, Nigerians and citizens need to move around, you go and engage them and identify routes that they could follow to peacefully protest while other members of the public go about their business. This whole idea of using show of force, escalated force to stop people has never really worked. It's actually what has made protests in Nigeria turn violent or bloody, and attempts by agents of the state to forcefully stop the rights of the people to protest. So what should happen is whenever you see a group of Nigerians marching for one thing or the other, which they have constitutional rights to do, you engage their leaders. All right. Who are the leaders of these uh, actions? Can we discuss so that you can protest and other members of the public can also well, well, go about that, their That doesn't seem to be happening a lot, you know. Um, I'm, I'm also then going to ask about the uh, democratic systems, you know, that we have in place already. I'm, I would quickly also state that... Um, um, we had also tried to reach out to uh, Garba Shehu and, of course, uh, Femi Adeshina to be a part of this discussion, but um, that wasn't successful. Um, it would have been great to also hear what they have to say about, um, you know, in, in this uh, discussion this morning. So let's now talk about um, what is needed in a country such as ours where we have democratic systems um, that seem to be abused. It is very clear. We are either ready to practice democratic system or not. And in a democratic system, it's underpinned by what we call social contract. The only reason why citizens gave away their sovereignty in favor of the state is to do two things. 
security and welfare. And if you look at all the demands that the protesters are making, which in your earlier question suggested that there are many, they come under the rubric of these two key provisions that the state is supposed to make, welfare and security. And where the state and its agencies are not doing that, the rich citizens have every right to protest. Over the weekend, I watched a video by a reverend father who is actually telling Nigerians, Muslims, Christians, there are things that have been clear for you to act on to enjoy, not going to pray. Their prayer has its own role, but there are actions you need to take where things are not happening, where you have stones on your neck. You need to remove the stones and pray and thank God for giving you the strength to remove the stones. Nigerians have stones on their neck. If you borrow that metaphor from Joy Flood, uh, death. So we need to remove yeah. these stones and pray to God for giving us the strength to remove it, not reducing every or spiritualizing everything. This is the time for every Nigerian to ask themselves, what is going on in this country? Right. Are we happy with it? And if we are not happy with it, what can we do peacefully to change it? One, one way that change can come, um, which a lot of people believe, is through the ballot box. Um, unfortunately, you know, that seems, a lot of people would say that that process has been compromised, leading to, of course, a narrowing down of options for legit legitimate participation in governance. Would you agree that, you know, that might not be a very, very strong option for Nigerians? It is a strong option if every Nigerian takes it seriously and not sell it. If all of us, including those of us in the studio, who are engaged in this advocacy, we need to get involved. I think civil society lost the ball, in my view, in 1999, when civil society resorted to be neutral, non-governmental, non-profit, and all of that. We have seen over these 20 years that that approach, while it has had its contribution, perhaps need to be rethought now, with a view to everybody getting on for. Politics is too important to be left to politicians. So I believe, as Aisha said earlier, if all of us come out and vote and be there to defend our mandate, no government machineries can stop us. But is this whole idea, as Fela sang in his song, I don't want to uh, come out so that I will not die. My father is sick at home. I have children. If I do this, they are not going to. We all need to take our destinies in our own hands. That's right. the only way to make our democracy functional. All right, let's, let's now go back to um, Aisha Yusufu. Um, um, uh, Innocent Jukma just spoke about uh, neutrality now. I want to get your thoughts on those who um, are apathetic about the state of our nation. There's people who, at this point, do not care any longer. What's your message to you know, people like that? Well, my message to people like that is one thing I've been saying, and I'll repeat it again, is the fact that yesterday's victims were once survivors. Today's victims were yesterday's survivors, and tomorrow's victims would be today's survivors. Today's survivors are you and I. And I also want to repeat that those that have been killed will not be killed again. The next to be killed are those of us that are alive. And so why they think that it is one of their business, the revolution, uh, revolution now protesters are just wasting their time. Let them just understand that it's only a matter, in Nigeria now, becoming a victim is a matter of when, not a matter of if. And sooner or later, it will get to their own doorstep. And at the end of the day, we are all affected by this. And it is time for people to take responsibilities and stop abdicating their responsibilities to God. God bless uh, the Reverend Father, who is calling out to, to, to citizens to tell them that, look, we cannot sit down and expect that God will do for us what he has given us the capacity to do for ourselves. Because that's one thing that Nigerians are very good at. We seem to think that we have the patent to prayers and that we will pray and solve our problem. The Nigerian problem will not be solved by prayers because God has given Nigeria everything it needs to be a great nation. It is only the people that have not realized that they ought to be a great nation and demand for Thank it. you. Thank you. Um, last, I'm going to speak with uh, Tokpe Akinode just so we can um, uh, wrap this up. You know, I, I, I want to know about your thoughts. You know, Aisha Yusufo earlier had spoken about one or two percent of a population being a part of, um, of, of a protest. What faith do you have that we would, um, Nigerians, would be able to pull those numbers at some point? Look, the government cannot even survive this woeful failure. No government anywhere in the world can resist the mass of the people. We are not, nobody's begging anybody to come out to protest. It is a natural reaction. 
And like I actually Sufu has said, it is a revolution that is bound to happen, whether bloodless or without blood. We can't debate it. There is going to definitely be a revolution in this country, and there's no doubt about it. Okay, all right. And of course, uh, Innocent Chukuma, um, in the event that these protests continue to fall on deaf ears, what options are left to frustrated citizens? You see, the uh, United Nations Declaration of uh, Human Rights in 1948 says if people are not forced as a last resort to rebellion, that rights, human rights, should be respected. It's, it's, it's incumbent on any government that wants to function peacefully under the rule of law to obey its own laws, allow the citizens, the rights that are guaranteed in the Constitution and all the international covenants, human rights covenants that Nigeria has ratified to express themselves and also create avenues for citizens to get involved. A situation where millions of youths are alienated from governance, alienated from means of livelihood. It's only a matter of time before rebellion comes in. And no government would want these citizens to rebel. Hence the demand that people should be allowed to peacefully protest and for government to carry out that basic function for which the state is created, which is provision of welfare and security for the people. All right, we would, uh, of course, uh, love to bring uh, you all in again to continue the discussion. Hopefully, we can also drag in um, Femi Adeshina and uh, Ogar Bashe or any of the government spokespersons to also um, share thoughts you know, on these issues um, as soon as possible. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you very much. The news continues shortly after this break. Stay with us. Mm -hmm.